Hey y'all and welcome back. I'm so happy you're here. So today, another devotion from our book, Five Minutes with Jesus, Quiet Time for Your Soul by Sheila Walsh with Sherry Craig. And today's title is very intriguing as well. It is A Broken Vessel. That's the title. And I'm just so anxious to read what this is about. I have my King James Bible ready and I'm already feeling the Lord. So Let's just see how he's going to minister to us, okay? A Broken Vessel Jean Cooley knows all too well the life-wrecking power of gossip. Life was going pretty well. Jean had a job he enjoyed, and he was engaged to be married. Then one night, tragedy struck. His fiancée was killed. The grief over the devastating loss of the woman he loved would have been enough for any man to deal with. But Jean's pain was compounded by rumors that began circulating online in the days following her death. An anonymous person has, had accused him of being addicted to drugs and complicit in his fiancée's death. None of the ac accusations were true, but the damage had been done. Jean was ostracized in his hometown, and when his boss heard the rumors, he lost his job. One person's cruel words came very close to destroying Jean's life. David, the shepherd, psalmist, and king knew this kind of pain. He had been the subject of some malicious slander. In Psalms 31, he poured out his broken heart to God. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. The words broken vessel don't have the same impact on us that they did on David. In his day, the ground was littered with pottery shards and pieces of broken vessels. Once a piece of pottery was cracked, it was no longer of any use at all. It was simply thrown out. It shattered on the ground and its pieces became part of the landscape. There was no repairing a broken piece of pottery. It was utterly and forever ruined. In the wake of the vicious gossip, that is how David felt about his life. Utterly ruined beyond repair. So he turned to the only one who could help. David needed to hear from God. He needed to hear the words of comfort, words of restoration. He knew that his God was the only one who could put his broken heart back together again. Have you ever been a victim of a rumor mill, of the rumor mill? Has someone's words left you feeling that your life is damaged beyond repair? I know what that feels like. When I was hospitalized for clinical depression, all sorts of stories circulated suggesting I was anything from a pathological liar to someone who could never have been trusted. In my brokenness, I turned to Jesus and discovered that rather than throwing the pieces away, he makes something whole and beautiful with them. Trust that he will do the same for you. God is in the business of healing broken hearts. Okay, <laughs> so many thoughts. Our first scripture comes from Psalms 34, chapter 34 and verse 19. And it is circled and labeled, I mean, underlined, circled, and highlighted in my Bible. And it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Mm -hmm. Our next scripture comes from 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. And it says, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear and was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hmm. Then we're going to go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2, and it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, 
because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Mm. Then we're going to go back to the book of Psalm, chapter 147 and verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Mm. Then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, and it said, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, tribulation in this text meaning trouble, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, and by the comfort, comfort in this text meaning help, wherewith, wherewith we ourselves are, comforted of God and are in this text means have received comfort from God. I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 13 and it says, Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Wow. Woo! This, this devotion brings back so many memories and I don't know if it was on this channel or the other channel before I made the devotional channel, but I talked about being that broken vessel and how I was so thankful that the Lord didn't throw away the clay that, you know, he saw something in me. And that song, he didn't throw away the clay. My mama years ago heard that song. And there was a time in, in our lives where my mother and I were not close at all. We had no relationship. We did not speak. It was for several years. Like, I didn't want to see her. I couldn't stand the sight of her. I couldn't stand her. Um, I wanted no part of her. And for several years, I never went around my family. And that was during the time that I was really at my worst. Um, I was just, I was just living like the devil. I mean, I was a horrible, horrible human being. And uh, my mama never stopped praying for me during that time. She never stopped loving me, even though I didn't, I mean, honestly, I was in such a state in that time that had I got news that she had passed away, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have cared. That's how callous and hard and so far from God that I was that I did, I would not have cared. My daddy even tried to talk to me um, about, you know, making up with her and I wanted no part of it. I wanted no part of it. And it's amazing how God is because to this day, she and I really don't remember what that was all about because God healed restored and made better than it ever was. We are closer now than we've ever been. But during that time, the Lord had given her a song. He didn't throw away the clay. And it was, she said, that was my song for you. And I would just keep reminding the Lord about you and praying for you. And no matter how far I, I would get away from God, he still seen something in me worth saving. He still loves me and loved me then, even when I didn't love myself. And he saw something worthy in me. And when others would have just thrown, tossed the clay out, you know, and started over with, with a new piece of clay, he didn't. He just started over on the same piece of clay and that song, if you've never heard it, he didn't throw away the clay. It's a beautiful song. And I think a lot of us, maybe not all, 
but a lot of us can really relate to that because we've not been the people that we are now. And um, I've told y'all how I don't ever want y'all to think that I'm fake. But if you were to talk to people that I used to hang around then and ask them about me, you would get a completely different story of the person I am now because they don't know me. They don't know this me. I'm a new creature in Christ. Um, it, he did a mighty work in me. Um, he didn't throw away the clay. He saw me worthy. God truly can heal. And he can make new and better than what our minds could even comprehend. Because if you would have told me then that I was going to be here now, that I was going to have the relationship that I have with my family now, that I was going to be in this place now, that I was going to have a devotional channel <laughs> talking to y'all about the goodness of God and sharing all these testimonies and things that I had been through, I would have laughed in your face, probably cussed you out, and made fun of you and mocked you. I would have. Um... But that just goes to show you what God can do. And I understand David so much. I love David. David truly is an example for us all. I mean, what ha what didn't David do? What hadn't David been through? Um, what lies haven't been told on David? What truths <laughs> did he, you know, we know as well. You know, he was not always this upstanding person. But God seen something in him and calls him a man after God's own heart. And Lord knows he wasn't perfect. But what I love about David and what I try to remember is David was never too full of his self. That when he realized the wrong he had done, he would fall on his face to God and ask for forgiveness. He was never too proud to ask for forgiveness. And I've tried to use that as an example of my life. I'm never too proud to ask for forgiveness. I'm never too full of self. Um, I will sometimes just apologize and ask for forgiveness, whether I truly feel that it is 100% on me, because I want to make keep myself right with God. I want to keep the channels of communication open with God and keep myself in check with God. And I love that about David, that he was never too proud and never too full of self, that he wouldn't fall on his face to his God, admit his wrongs and ask him to forgive him. I love that. The once, once a piece of pottery, I uh, highlighted some things, but once a piece of pottery cracked, it was no longer of any use at all. How many times has the world looked at us like that? That you can you can do 99 things right, but that one time you do something wrong, they are so quick to want to just hold that over your head, to just, you know, let that be your label and you're no use anymore. It doesn't matter the 99 good things that you did, but the one thing that you did wrong that's the world, the world's perception. That's the world's take on it. But when you have the Lord inside of you, we see things differently because we see how imperfect we are. And I never want to be guilty of holding things over people's heads. Um, you know, as a human being, we can, um, we mess up. It's just inevitable. We mess up. We slip up. Um, we don't mean to, but it happens. But as much as God forgives us, I want to be able to forgive others. Now, there are areas in my life where I am really, really str struggling with that and trying to do my best. I've not got there yet, but with the help of the Lord, I'm going to get there because he knows the intent of my heart. He knows how much I want to forgive that person. He knows how much I want to move past. And I'm really, really trying to get there. Okay. I'm trying. I'm not there yet, but it's a testimony in the making, you know? Um, 
And I don't want to look at others the way the world looks at others because I want to be separate from the world. I want to look at others with the love and the grace and the mercy that God looks at us with. Um, most times I'm able to do that. Most times. But there are times, you know, that I have to get this flesh under subjection. But I'm so glad that God doesn't look at us as a broken piece of pottery that is no longer of use. It's just no good. Just toss it aside. They, the world looks at, there's no repairing the broken piece of pottery. That it is utterly and forever ruined. But God knows what he can do. And what does he do? He puts us back on the potter's wheel and starts over on us. Fixing the cracks, fixing the breaks, patching some things, you know. I'm not a potter, um, so I don't understand all of the pottery lingo. But, you know, I like to think that he, he just, when he starts to see a crack, he puts us back on the potter's wheel. It starts mending that crack so it doesn't get any bigger and starts doing a little bit of repair, fixing some things. That's what I like to visualize. David knew that his life was utterly ruined and beyond repair. But he knew that if he could get to God, he turned to God. It says, so he turned to the only one who could help. David knew the only one that was going to be able to help him. David knew. David needed to hear from God. He needed to hear words of comfort, words of restoration. He knew that his God was the only one who could put his broken heart back together again. And I think so many times in our lives, we have to reach this point to where you've run out of options. What you've been doing ain't working. You know, there's not enough medication. There's not enough People telling you what you want to hear. You know, your mama can't do it. Your granny can't do it. Your husband can't do it. Your kids can't do it. And you have to reach that point to where the only one that can help me is God. I've got to get to God. I've got to take it to God because what I'm doing is not working. And that's where I got to with all of my stuff I was going through. I reached that point to where what I've been doing ain't working. The problems keep coming and they just keep getting worse and worse. So I got to get to God. I got to get to God however I have to get to God. And that's when I started fasting. That's when I started sacrificing some sleep and getting in my closet every morning before I had to get dressed for work. That's when I would get into my Bible. That's when I would start praying like I had never prayed before and getting into that place with God where it was between me and God because I knew he was the only one that was going to fix my life. And I had to get to that point and accept he's the only one that's going to fix my life and I've got to accept how he chooses to fix my life. That this may be the direction my life continues to go. I may never get back with my husband. I may lose my house. I may lose my car. I may lose everything, you know, physical properties, whatever. I may lose my credit. I may lose my name, whatever. He may take me down a different road, but I know he is the only one that can repair and fix me. I had to reach that place. Just like David knew, he had to reach God. He had to hear from God because he knew God was the only one that was going to repair and fix his life. He knew it. And that's, he had to hear from God. And I've been there. I've, I still get there, you know. Trust that he will do the same for you. He is no respecter of person. He did it for David. He's done it for me. He can do it for you. We just have to allow it. We have to accept it. And we have to get into that place with God. And he will do for you what you want him to do for you. Um, it may be a different way than you expected. It may be a little more painful than you thought. But 
stick with him. Stick with him. Because I promise you, when it's all said and done, you're going to be better for it. You're going to be better for it. God is in the business of healing broken hearts. He's the only one that can do it. He's the only one that can heal your broken heart. The only one. I would love to tell you, you know, there's a magic drug. There's magic whatever. I would love to be able to tell you that, oh, if you do this, this, and this, you're going to fix your broken heart. It's going to be done. You're not going to feel that pain. You're not going to know that pain. God is the only one that can heal a broken heart. I know this from experience. I know this from life. I know this from watching my children. I know this from going through things. God is the only one that can heal a broken heart. And sometimes he's just sitting there waiting for you to, I guess, try it all before you get to him. He knows that, you know, he's the only one. And so he's ready, willing, and able. But I've told y'all before, he will not force himself on you. He's much a gentleman. And he will wait until you invite him into your problem, into your mess. And then he will get in there and he will fix it all up. You may have a few scars. You may have a, you know, a few places that you just gonna you can have some scars. Okay. You just gonna have some scars. It's not gonna be pretty. But when it's all said and done, it's you it's gonna be like you never ever imagined it could be. It's gonna be better than what you your mind can go to. I, I know this from experience because if you would have told me in 2017. If you would have told me in 19, if you'd have told me in 2010 that in 2017 I was going to be where I was at, I would have laughed at you. If you would have told me in 2017 that in 2024, Donna, you're going to have a devotional channel, um, you're going to be sharing your testimonies, you're going to be encouraging, you know, uh, telling people about the Lord, encouraging them. I would have said, there's no way, but yes way, because of God, there's nothing he can't do. It goes back to our devotion, a few devotions back. Nothing is impossible with God, and he can take you and completely make you a brand new creature, and he's the only one that can fix your broken heart, the only one, and I know there are many out there with broken hearts because life is hard, life is tough, things happen. But trust him. Go to him. Invite him in. And watch what he will do for you. I feel like this, this devotion has been kind of like choppy. Because I have so many emotions flowing through me right now. But I encourage you to just get into your word. Let God begin to do a work in you and to heal you. And if you've ever felt like you don't matter, like just a broken piece of pottery that they just threw away because you're not useful anymore, you, there's no good to you anymore, listen to that song, He Didn't Throw Away the Clay. Get into the Word. Let the Lord begin to heal you and talk to you and make you what he wants you to be, not what the world wants you to be, not what you want to be, not what your family thinks you should be, but let him begin to do a work in you into what he created you to be. I love y'all. I pray this has blessed you and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.